Canada Turf Conference last February. Uh, this was just before uh, everything broke loose in the world. But uh, this is not our whole class. This is only uh, only a portion of it. We got about 22 turf students all together. But this is a handsome group of these people are from Kamloops in the interior, from uh, Coquitlam, uh, from India, from Albania, from Richmond, South Korea, from India, and from India. So you might recognize some of those people there. You'll be hearing from them today. So what is a turf grass manager? Well, this is the two main fields of what we teach. And essentially it's professional turf. So professional turf means not just lawns or ordinary grass area, it's special stuff. It's things like baseball fields, golf courses, football fields, cricket pitches. Uh, the, the ultimate in terms of leadership is to be either a sports field manager or golf course superintendent. So this is the person that runs these facilities and this is the person that runs these facilities. Uh, when you start out in the business, you start out as a groundsman on both levels. Uh, so you're, you're a worker, you learn how to do all the jobs, and you build your way up. As you build up skills, you then move up to a technician. So it could be a, an irrigation technician, a spray technician, a horticulture technician, a mechanical technician, sort of the next step up. And then when you prove yourself, you move up to either an assistant or a foreman role. That's sort of like a mid-management level. And then eventually you become a sports field manager, golf course superintendent. So as the bosses of either of these, you're responsible for multi-million dollar operations, uh, typically anywhere from one to $3 million worth of equipment alone, usually a multi-million dollar irrigation system, and typically a manpower budget, your most important resource of anywhere from 600,000 to several million worth of people you manage. So, that brings us to this. What does a turf manager manage? Well, make it simple. Manage people. Your staff is your biggest resource. You manage plants, and in our case, turf in most situations, but we do deal with, with trees as well, and shrubs, everything else, and places. So golf course or sports field parks are the, the two main things. Oops, let's go back a bit. This is interesting. We've uh, done a little, um, a little survey of past turf managers, and these are the kind of traits of successful turf managers. They all seem to have these needs, these abilities, these, this is what they want out of life, and this is what they find in turf management. Why you want to be in the industry? Well, here's the reasons. It's got all these fantastic benefits. Uh, many people that are in the industry have a love of sports of some kind, but not all. For some, it's more just being outdoors. Uh, the workplace is second to none. Uh, tremendous variety. Most people think, oh, all you do is cut grass. No, actually, cutting grass is just maybe 30 to 40 percent of what we do. There's so much more. Very flexible in terms of we can move laterally. You can you, Once you have your diploma, you can be a sports field manager. Then you can work on a golf course. You, you can go anywhere. It's portable anywhere in the world. Our education is respected worldwide, and we do have people working all over North America and all over the world. Everyone talks about sustainability, uh, but most people think you're sustainable just by throwing a coffee cup into recycling. Well, when you're managing hundreds of acres of area of green space, yeah, you, you have a chance to do it. Camaraderie, if you're not familiar with that word, that means fellowship, it means people, it's a brotherhood, it's, it's family. And we'll talk about that later. And opportunity. There's fantastic opportunity to move up quickly here. Here's something that frequently asked questions. How quickly can I move up in the industry? And what kind of money? Uh, it is, uh, on my screen, the pictures are blocking some of that. Can you guys see the whole picture? Yes. yes? We yeah, we can. Okay, good. All righty. So this is typically the number of years it takes to move up in the business and the rough money. You'll see at the lower levels, like groundsman and technician, those are the rough hourly wages. And then usually when you become assistant and up, you move into salary. Now, these years are quite flexible. One to three years as a groundsman, two to, but someone like Ardit, he'll tell his story. He's already up, up to this level in the middle already after just two years. So it's possible to move up pretty quick. Is there jobs available? choice of jobs. Uh, every year this time, uh, this spring, I have to talk with students and they're 
their uh, quandary is not just, will I find a job? It's which job do I accept? Because there's always multiple. Um, like Ardit will say, there's a chance to move up really quickly and there's always part-time part -time job placement for students. It usually just takes a phone call. Where do our students come from? Well, these are the sources of where they're gonna come from. Uh, groundsmen and parks already in the business and they want to become a manager. Uh, people coming from other careers and high school graduates. Prerequisites, you'll have university prerequisites, which uh, the girls will go over later, but in, within turf and horticulture, these are prerequisites, 11 uh, math and C or 12 English. Is there financial aid? Yes, there is. There's uh, not only is there university aid and whatever uh, international has, but we at the moment, we're just in the process of about to hand out our horticulture awards. We've got $93,000 that we're gonna hand out to student awards. And uh, students don't know it yet, but uh, I think we got about seven turf students that are cashing in on that. And there's turf industry awards as well that are uh, available. As we said, there is part-time work available for students who want to. When you get started, you can start at three entry points in the fall, in the spring, and you can even start in the summer. Most of our courses are fall and spring. We do have a several in the summer. Uh, one question, can girls do this too? You guys recognize that you students recognize this. This is Ksenia. She graduated last year and I saw her out in the field just yesterday and that's her baby. She's responsible for this machine and she has a big truck and a trailer that she tows it around to various parts and uh, she does everything with this. So yeah, not only can they do it, but they can be very successful. Overall, in general, these are the things we learn. It's a balance of science, how to grow turf, the hands-on practicality of operating equipment like this, and the business end, which also includes here training people, personnel management, finances. And the neat thing about this, it's a very rare education. Everything that they learn here came from the turf industry. So when this, you know, when this program started about 30 years ago, all these courses were designed by the turf industry. They weren't just out of a textbook. The kind of things we learn, I'm gonna go over briefly the topics. So the topics in the courses, in general, they all apply to the care of either lawns, but mainly golf courses and sports fields. So you have a flexibility, anything to do with turf, you can do it. These are the type of uh, things we learn. We learn about how the plant grows, identifying plants, the health of plants, some of the equipment we use, 22 inch greens more, you may think that's a small machine. Well, this machine can cost over $20,000, believe it or not. This one costs about $70,000. And these are common to both golf and, uh, and sports fields. We get into hands-on stuff. It's not all just operating fancy equipment. We learn to do things by hand, getting dirty, laying sod, cutting with a sod cutter, uh, learn all about irrigation, Learn all about fertility, about how you design a fertilizer program, the science of that, and how to apply it. Dethatching, you may or may not have seen these machines. They essentially renovate the upper surface. We learn all about soils and root zones. We learn all about math. The math is, is something that's all through horticulture. And as a manager, you really are gonna know your math. But the great news about it is if you look at what this math is, it's simple ratio equations. It's stuff you learn in grade seven, grade eight. So it's not complicated stuff. Hey, who's that all-star? Mechanics. We uh, learn, take two mechanics courses and we learn heavy equipment. Actually, Ksenia's job now that she got, she got her initial training at going to school, learning how to do these things. This is a turf disease, integrated pest management. We learn about diseases, insects, weeds, Ergonomics, there's a lot of important little things we're gonna learn in every class, like how to carry a heavy bag distances by yourself without hurting your body. Aeration and top dressing. This is a machine which punches holes in the turf and removes cores. And you see the students there on a lawn bowling pitch removing cores. Uh, one of their favorite parts is uh, they develop their own resume, cover letter, and portfolio. So we guide students how to put a professional presentation together, make themselves marketable, not only for their first job, for every job down the road. And going in hand in hand with that is many students say this is the most valuable day of their education, is where we get together with several 
hardcore turf managers, turf professionals, and we do a pretend interview. But what's neat about this is many of these jobs, many of these pretend interviews actually turn into real jobs. And the ones we just did last fall with the introductory course, I think three of these students ended up working for these panel. How we learn, we learn a variety of ways. You learn in a team with two people working together, you learn in bigger groups, and you learn by yourself. We do experiments, learn how to do experimental trials. We attend events, conferences, field days. We create things. Here we're in the process of uh, creating uh, irrigation design and golf course design. We problem solve. Whenever we see a problem out there, either on campus or in a field trip, we talk about it. Well, what's going on here? How, how did this happen? How do we fix it? Uh, we put together presentations, we put together game plans, we put together summaries, and we to practice presenting to each other. Field trips, we go to turf professionals, and uh, actually this turf professional in the middle, Brad here, he's one of our grads from three years ago, and he's now a foreman at uh, one of the local parks. When we go on field trips, uh, I recall at this uh, cricket pitch, uh, Art had said, can I, can I try that? It's a roller. It's a very heavy roller. And they said, sure. And he hopped aboard and uh, got to roll turf. We discussed things. So when we have, here's an opportunity where we met with a landscaping company. And here the girls are meeting with one of the foremen saying what it's like working with this company and, and what it's like being a girl working with this company in the business. We have an opportunity to teach each other. So it's not just learning how to do things, but because a lot of your eventual role as a turf manager involves people, you got to learn how to teach. We touch things as much as possible. Get hands on because uh, you also know if you're going to teach things, you have to know how to actually do it. We have ample opportunity to practice the skills. So it's not just learning how to operate a more, but if you want, you can come out on your own time and practice doing it. Here's where it gets interesting. We're in a very interesting time right now. Previous uh, a year ago this time and previous to a year ago, Everything was the traditional classroom setup. So it was you attend in person in classes and you attend all labs in classes. Typically, we have about 13 weeks of every course. And typically, you have about two, two hours of lecture and maybe about three hours of lab. But this past year, because of COVID, we have changed things. We've adapted. And our lectures have all been asynchronous, which means we tape the lectures. And we have a platform called Moodle where the students can view these presentations on their own time. Some classes will have live sessions as well. And we always use Zoom type sessions called uh, a big blue button that where we get together at least once a week and talk about questions and answers. With our labs over the past year, we paired our face-to-face -face labs, F2F, that means face-to-face. -face. We paired those down to only the bare essentials roughly zero to 50% of our usual 13 labs, but we're probably gonna pick those back up for the fall. The nice part about this new system is it gives more flexibility for students to work on the side and for their personal life, less travel involved. The only downside is it's been less personal face-to-face -face connections, but I think we're gonna end up with this. It's gonna be a new post-secondary reality where it'll be blend of online education and personal. And in our industry, this is important. What you see here is being hands-on, being on the machine. You can't do that online and we're not gonna sacrifice that. So that's a little bit about the business, about delivery. Well, why would you come to KPU? Well, it's totally relevant. Everything you learn here, you're going to use in your job, everything. It's the only one in BC like it. Choice of jobs. There's Kieran's boss, Steve, very nice, friendly fellow. And uh, when you get in the business, when you're looking for work, uh, you, you can meet people like this personally and have your choice. The advancement potential is tremendous. You can rise up very, very quickly. You'll see, I'll show you the statistics on this, extremely high retention rate, which means when people come into this business, they tend to stay in this business. Not like other industries where they come and go and get tired of it. My favorite thing is the people. Everybody in this business is fantastic. Uh, everybody you meet is welcoming. It, it's, it's actually a weird industry because you could have two golf courses that are neighbors, 
technically they're competitors, but they are best friends and they will trade equipment. They will trade labor. They will do anything for each other. And that's rare. You don't see that in many other businesses. And on a personal level, you're outdoors a lot. You have a nice blend of physical activity and managerial activity. It's not like you're, uh, when you're in starting out as a groundsman, you're going to do mainly physical activity. But the more you move up, the more you get a blend of both. And here's another beautiful thing. Besides the people, how many people can say of their profession, this is my office? Most other professions, their office is a cubicle or a room with 30 other people and a computer screen. How would you like to work in something like this? Here's a list of some of our graduate superintendents. These are golf courses that our graduates are superintendents of. They're all over the province, all over the country, all over the world. Some of the places that our assistants are at, and actually I haven't added yet, but I got to add Guilford onto this list now. It's not on here yet. And some of the places where we have sports field managers. Now, many of these have multiple, like for example, Langley Township, uh, we've got at least a dozen KPU turf grads working at this one alone. This is, have a good look at this. This is a remarkable statistic. I looked at all the grads over the last 10 years and broke them down because I keep track of where everybody is. And this is where they are now. And this bottom one is spectacular. There's only 4% of turf graduates over the last 10 years that are not in the business anymore. And if you do some Googling in any other profession, I don't think you'll see those numbers anywhere. So once you're in here, you tend to stay in here. There's a handsome fellow, uh, our, new, uh, our new interim assistant at Guilford Golf Course. And I'll let you read this little thing. This is from some of our other grads. These are testimonials from some of our other grads that are that we still keep in close contact with. And, and our students see these people at the conferences. There's Karen at uh, Surrey Golf Course now. She just graduated. Fedge is a brand new student. He just started in the fall and he's uh, absolutely loving it so far. And it's, uh, um, he, he's not looking back and he's, He's going to be a good one. Frank, one of our classmates, uh, he's at Morgan Creek Golf Course. Tom graduated about three or four years ago, and uh, he stepped right in after a year of graduation. He stepped into his first superintendent's job. So you, you can move up really, really quick if you work hard and show your promise and prove yourself to people. Nishant, we talked about, he worked with Kieran at Surrey Golf Course. He's doing very well in his second season. This is a nice story. This is not her golf course, but uh, Jen is, was one of our grads from about 15 years ago, and she was the very first female golf course superintendent in British Columbia. And uh, I actually just saw an article on her uh, in Turf Recreation Canada, and she, she's got a feature highlight as one of the up and coming career leaders in turf management. If you're going to get into turf management and if you're going to go to school and and this stuff does not apply to turf it applies to any school you go to highly recommend you do this stuff and if you do this stuff this is what our grads do they will be successful and so will you the first one you might wonder what that is seal through hoops well if you go to the circus you may see a seal jumping through a hoop and, they, and when they get through they get a piece of fish that's what you're like at school you're going to do this for your teachers I give uh, Arden a lab report every week he's got to do. He jumps through that hoop, he gets his piece of fish. You're going to do a lot in the infrastructure with admissions, with finances. Just chill out, do what you got to do, move on. It's just like real life. When you're in school, these are very important. Be on time at every class. Do not miss classes. Be there on time. Sit up front if you can. You're paying for it. Get the most of your money. Take detailed notes. Ask lots of questions, do your best, meet everyone you can, get involved in anything possible. People that are successful in this industry, in any industry, do this stuff. It's not rocket science. And love this. Overall, this could be your office. This could be where you go to work every day. And this is why people tend to stay in the industry so long is because they really, really enjoy going to work. They want to be here. 
They want to experience all the special things that these sites have to offer and to recognize. And sometimes people pinch themselves and say, wow, I'm responsible for the care of this. It's, it's a special feeling and uh, uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay, I'm going to try and get out of this. And then Rita will, there we go. Am I out of it okay? Yes, perfect. Thank Good. you so much, Stan. Welcome. I've, I've learned a lot. I think it's very, very practical and a very insightful presentation. Good. Um, so if uh, any of you have questions, you know, uh, in the bottom, you can see a Q and a chat, just type in your questions there. Or when we open the floor for questions, you can, I, I will unmute you if you have any questions. And also you, you know the function uh, raise hand, just a click and raise your hand and I will know that you have some questions or you want to speak to us. Okay, then let's move on. So um, Lucia, are you ready? Yes, I am. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Yes, I'm ready. Um, let me share my screen here. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Lucia Luan. I'm the admissions coordinator at TPU International Department. Well, due to some technical problem, my <clears throat> um, Zoom just doesn't let me turn on my camera. My apologies. Well, regarding our admission requirements, they are different. Depends on the type, type of credential you are applying for. Turf management is an undergraduate program, so you will have to both meet English requirement and have a high school graduation diploma or complete at least 24 undergraduate level credits to be admitted. And <clears throat> wondering how to meet the English requirement. There are a few ways, but the majority of our international students have chosen to take one of those tests to meet the requirement but the test has to be taken within the last two years. Well, you can find detailed information from KP website if you are um, study the study high, um, if you are taking high school courses um, in Canada. We do take um, high school uh, grade 12 English. And if students do not meet the English requirement, we have an option of taking well, they're gonna have an option of taking our um, pathway program, which is English proficiency upgrading courses. Meanwhile, those students can take a limited number of undergraduate courses towards their intended undergraduate credential if they are in pathway level two or three. So now, after hearing the program introduction and admission requirements and if you want a golf course to be your future office, I would recommend you to apply early because some of our popular programs are filled up quickly. Turf management program is one of them. Here are application deadlines for different semesters. Currently, we are, op um, we are still accepting applications for summer and fall 2021 and spring 2022 semesters. And yes, KPU also offers scholarships and awards to international students. Um, as you can see, we do have um, KPU major entrance scholarships here, but the eligibility is um, based primarily on academic achievement of a student's high school grades and other conditions may apply. Um, well, I will recommend you to check, um, to check out these um, eligibility criteria on our website. And uh, if you are a international student, please be minded that um, IRCC requires that international students have access to sufficient funding to tuition, student fees, and living expenses for the duration of their studies before being issued a study permit. So funding administered by the university is supplemental. However, 
international students are permitted to work part-time during their studies and work full-time during scheduled breaks. Of course, there are conditions apply. Well, if you are planning to work in Canada after graduation, then you will have to apply for a post-graduation work permit. Um, as everyone knows, I, I, I'm sure you guys all know, um, programs offered at KPU are eligible for PGWP upon graduation. Okay, in order to obtain a PGWP, international students will have to meet those criteria. First, you need to apply within 120, 180 days after you get your final marks. And if your study permit will expire before you get your final grades, then you can either apply for a visitor record to stay in Canada longer or leave Canada and apply for your PGWP. And you must also complete a study permit at a designated learning institution that was at least eight months long and that led to a degree, diploma, or certificate. Please allow me to emphasize that our turf management is a PGWP eligible program. Besides, you must have a maintained full-time status as a student in Canada during each semester of your study program. To support your PGWP application, you can request for a supporting letter from KPU after you are approved to graduate um, by the university. Please be noted that there are um, temporary changes to the eligibility um, criteria for APUWP because of COVID-19. So always refer to IRCC website for the latest updates. Well, if you have more questions regarding our admission requirements and programs, there are three ways to get in touch with us. First, we have two virtual drop-in sessions for prospective students from Monday to Friday, except Wednesday. Or you can give us a call if you are inside Canada. And email is always a great way to contact us. Um, you can find all the um, drop-in information on our website, but feel free to take a picture of this slide just to keep all the information handy. Well, I'm looking forward to meeting you at Quantum Polytechnic uh, University. Thank you all. Thank you, Lucia. <laughs> it's very useful information. Thank you. Um, and um, if any of you are international students and you're here with us today, feel free to type in your questions in the Q&A chat. All right, then let's move on um, to uh, Ardit and Kiran. Hello. Hi, hey, Ardit. Hi, Kiran. Finally to meet with you two. Yes. Thank you, pleased to meet you too. So um, we can start with a brief introduction of, um, of yourself. Um, I see Ardit is muted. Maybe we can start with uh, Kiran. Yeah, sure. So I'm Kiran and I'm from India and I've been here in Canada for like about three years now. I came here when I was 19, now I'm 22. And I started my studies at KBU and I always wanted to be in turf management because I really love to be outdoors. And, and there I was with the turf industry and then Steve hired me and it's great since then. And I think it's great living here too. And that's the story of my life. Awesome. Hey, Ardit? Yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is Ardit Kapri. I come from Europe. And uh, before I came here in Canada, my sister was living in BC. And she was telling me about the beautiful skin landscapes of BC. So I, I'm a person that love outdoors. And I would really... Uh, would like that my career would also be outdoors. So I chose horticulture at that time and applied for 
at the University of KPU. I heard that it's a very good university to, to work at and to, to get your degree. So after I got my, uh, after I sent my application, I got approved and then I had some English courses before I went to the horticulture department. And then I saw the introduction of STEM. Uh, it was the same as the one you just heard now. So I this got- This is really... my office, <laughs> exactly. so tempting. And I, I got really excited when I saw that, uh, that presentation. So I waited for him until he finished the talk and then I went to ask him some questions. I never saw myself to work at the golf course because it looked like something big. Professional players go there, reach people. So I never saw myself in, into that. So I asked him honestly, I said to him, look, I'm an international student. So I, this seems exciting. Is there a chance for me to, to get into it? And I said, oh yeah, for sure. And then uh, we, he got me in to work as a volunteer. He called the nearest golf course to my house. And then I got into the industry, tried it for a month and I saw it that I could really make it. And then I decided to, to choose turf management as my program. That is my story, how I got into it. And so far I'm really, really happy with my, my life choice because I see many people, they, they choose a profession but they don't don't go into it to work in the real life and then after they find out that they don't like it or something else but here at kpu it's 50 percent hands-on and 50 percent uh, is uh, teaching so it's really really good uh, opportunity to see yourself and to to find out if it is for you or not this is my story of Oh, I, yeah, this is incredible. Uh, you just mentioned that you came here in 2018. It was a really a short period of time till today. And yeah. so do you are a uh, Karen. It's, um, um, it's four years ago we came to Canada. Yeah. Uh, you are you are Almud Karen. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I came here three years ago. Three years ago. Yes. And yep. today, Kiran, you have completed the program and you are working yep. full time and are dead. You are working and studying at the same time. Yep. So um, maybe you can tell us where do you see your career going and uh, where, what position you are at, at the golf course and, uh, and where you see your career path moving forward. Sure. Well, just as Stan mentioned earlier, I, I started out as a groundsman. It's the, the, the base position that you can get in, in the industry. And I didn't know anything. I didn't know the names of the machines, how to operate them, nothing. And then while I was uh, studying at the KPU and uh, being at my job position, uh, I always l had uh, an open ear in a way to learn about stuff and to try them. I, I would always go and, and try, can I try this? Can I try that? What is this called? Asked a lot of questions. Stan gave me some really uh, helpful tips in the beginning. They are very simple. They may seem like uh, not very important, but they are very, very important. If you, if you listen to those simple, uh, uh, if you listen to those simple advices, you would be, uh, you'd go, up in the industry really quick, quickly. So while I was continuing my studies, I got the pesticide management ticket at KPU. And at my golf course, there, there wasn't a spray tech. Spray tech means uh, spray, taking care of uh, the fertilization of the greens and the pesticide application on the greens. So I asked the superintendent if it's possible for me to get the certificate and then become the spray tech of the course. And he said, yeah, for sure, if you, if you are able to get it. So it is only like a, a month and two weeks long course. I took that with Stan, learned, learned the myth and uh, learned everything about it. 
got the best side ticket and then went up uh, in the position of Spaytech. And this happened in about eight months of me being in the industry, which was great for me, great for uh, like being an international student because my my wage got up, my uh, my knowledge got up, so it was really, really good. And after that, there are many opportunities out there in the golf course, especially. My golf course uh, had some problems in the beginning because one of the superintendents that was there before left, quit. And uh, some one, one person got sick, so they were short in people. And in a way, I also got lucky. So I just had to prove myself and my abilities, all the things that I learned from KPU. And I was trying, I spoke with the general manager, spoke with the superintendent, if it's possible for me to, uh, to get to the assistant position. And I told them, give me the chance, I will prove myself. And then if you see it possible that I can do it, you can get me in the position. If not, then you, I'll, I'll stay at the position where I am. And I applied, taking the advices from KPU. I did my resume, cover letter, everything. I also did the work at, at my, my job. And then it was, uh, it was two months ago where I got the position. And they looked into it. They were discussing about it and they thought because when COVID hit, uh, many golfers came to the golf course. So they really needed uh, help to keep the golf course at the peak performance. And they thought that me being there would really help. So that, that is how I got the position. And now, now I'm, I'm really excited. I've done many projects in, in two months period. I've done lots of projects. So it's it's really interesting it's really exciting yeah. for me i love being outdoors the people are great get to know many many uh, business people that that come and play talk to them it's it's been great i just want to say congratulations for your thank you so much promotions yeah. and uh i always love to hear your story i did yep okay so karen do you yeah, want to sure. with us? Yeah. So my story is a little more complicated than him because I had like two jobs. I started in like 2018 and I had to get my work experience, the 450R requirement, right? So I did like two jobs. I already had one and I love that job too, a and w. I really love that. So I was like, okay, I'll do part-time at both the jobs in summer. So I did it in the summer. I did work at 30 golf club part-time and then a and w and then I felt it was it was really nice job right you're outdoors you're just your own boss there's nobody to tell you what to do it just you do it on your own and it's like no more stress and all because I work two different jobs so I think I know I mean the pressure we have there but we don't have any pressure here so I thought it was easy I mean I, I can get through it so I did another 2019 summer and now I got my work permit like two weeks ago so I decided to work full time with the course and now I am working full time with the course as the groundskeeper, of course. And because it was just like two summers, right? So that is how I'm doing in my career. And I think I'd be looking into like assistant for it, like maybe one year, maybe two years. So that is how I get. Yeah. How did you manage to take, uh, take courses and, uh, taking two part-time jobs at the same time it must be oh no oh yeah it was it was because I was like bouncing two things but Stan helped me a lot because it's really easy at K KPU they just help you through all of it the courses that are available and then we have all this uh, things going on else and then uh, what I did was I did a lot of course planning and it helped me to get through the course so that's how I did it that's awesome. Yeah, so uh, I see some questions here in the chat and also in the Q&A. 
Uh, maybe let's just open the floor to accept questions from our attendees. Um, and uh, if you want to speak out, just uh, raise your hand. If you can hear me, I think so, okay. So uh, where are the most students coming from for this program? Probably, can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Probably most of our students historically have come from within the turf industry. So they've been a groundsman for a year or two, and then they realize if I want to move up, I need an education. I need a turf diploma. This turf diploma is the basis for moving up into a foreman or a sister in management role. Now, mm -hmm. some people are in the industry for years and just enjoy being a groundsman. That's fine. And, and sometimes they do that for years, then realize, okay, it's time to step up and they move up. So you're, you go at your own pace. You don't have to be jumping up constantly. Mm -hmm. But historically, most have come from the industry. But like I said earlier, we, we get people coming from other careers, people that have worked in offices and say, I don't want to do this anymore. People who just love sports. Uh, people right out of high school. Um, Mike, uh, one of our grads from about 10 years ago, he, he loved baseball. He lived and breathed baseball as a kid all the way till he graduated from high school. He took the KPU turf diploma and on the day he graduated after two years, he got his dream job. And since then he's been working for the city of Abbotsford and he manages their baseball fields. So he's living his dream. He's getting paid to be where he wants to be. Yeah. So that's essentially where, where people come from. They come from everywhere. Yeah. And how many of the students are international students in your class? And for these international students, where are they coming from? Good. Right now we have five internationals at this point. Uh, from Out of least, 30 students? Uh, out of about 22 students. Yeah. Uh, uh, from Europe, from India, from South Korea. And it looks like the fellow we were talking about earlier who just got a job with Ardit, uh, another fellow from India, he's just getting started in it. So he was in as a general student and then he took one of my courses last fall and I realized, hey, this looks pretty cool. And so now he's starting to work on golf courses and he's getting in. So it's pretty interesting. Sometimes people just kind of fall into it. They just don't know where they're going and then they, oh, that looks pretty cool. I'm going to try that. And then once they get into it, they find out, yeah, this, this is fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in terms of uh, where the international students are from, I think it's pretty diversified uh, from Europe, from India, from Korea, from China. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, do you see any difference uh, for international students and domestic students in terms of uh, getting the job in this field? Uh, the reason I ask this is um, 10 years ago, myself, I was an international student. So I didn't really find myself equally um, competent as domestic students to, to get a job. My major was uh, business. I, I studied uh, finance. Uh, from another institution. Uh, so for this industry, uh, do you think um, international students um, would have uh, additional difficulty to find jobs? It depends on the student. Mm -hmm. And as Ardit was saying, it's all about you and it's all about how you work. Let's give an example. Uh, I get calls virtually every week of the year from a golf course superintendent or sports field manager saying, hey, either I'm looking for somebody, have you got any students you can recommend or graduates, or else so-and-so has applied, he's one of your students, tell me about him. And this is interesting. You know, what they things they do not care about, they do not ask what grades they got, they do not ask how well they did in projects. The things they wanna know they say, Stan, from, from what you've seen of these people, do they work hard? Do they show up every day on time? Do they have a good attitude? Do they get along with people? And are, do they really love being in turf? You know what? You could say the same for any industry. So just like Kieran and Ardit have embraced being where they are and taken full advantage of it and, and dove in head first, 
Anybody can do that. It does not matter where you're from. It's just you put the work ethic in and the commitment and you will be successful. It doesn't matter where you're from. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Myself, I have seen a lot of support from, from the people at work. I never felt like left behind or, or something, something like that because uh, what they care about is if you do the job, like Stan said, and if you are good, good at the job, it doesn't matter where you're from, what color you are. They, all they care about if you, if you do the job and have good attitude, uh, get along well, that's only the, the thing they care about. And then they will support you. Like you don't know the words they will tell you. you they will try to make it easier for you. This is what I found with my experience. And now, like, like Stan said, we're hiring uh, another KPU international student. And he just got in, like, he, he applied. Uh, he had some landscaping experience. Uh, he's liking it, he's enthusiastic. And that's all we basically need. If he's enthusi enthusiastic about it, and if he shows up on time, we will teach him everything, and, and then we'll go from there. So it's really good on that part, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see another question here um, from uh, Tracy. Is there a certificate required after graduation for seeking a job? A qualification or certificate you need to get? Good, good question. The TERF diploma is that certificate. Now, Keep in mind, you can just go and get a job at a golf course. It's more difficult at a sports field or parks operation, but it's the diploma that will allow you to get a good job and to move up if you wish at that point. One of the, you, another question was, you know, where do these people come from? Some of the people come from the business that they maybe were working as a groundsman for three or four years. Actually, I showed you a picture of one of those guys, Brad. He was with the township of Langley for several years and he wanted a job really bad. It was sort of the next step up and he got bypassed. He didn't get the job. It went to someone with lesser experience, but he got it because he had the KPU turf diploma and that was mm. it. Brad came back to school and now he's where he wants to be. So yeah, it's, it's kind of like in terms of if you want to move up within it's, it's the way to do it. You've, you've got to have it as a bare minimum. But there isn't any industry certification per se. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Keep easiest thing that, is the one. The easiest thing that they can get before the turf diploma, which is, uh, which is big, is pesticide? the pest, pesticide mm -hmm. applicator uh, license, which mm -hmm. is included in the turf management program, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Feel free to raise your hand if you want to speak to any of us. Let me see here. Yeah, I see some of the questions were answered by Lucia. Thank you, Lucia. Yeah, we don't have any more questions. Is there anything you want to share with uh, our attendees today? Any of you? I'll say one, one or two quick things. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, in terms of more information, I. Um, this PowerPoint show that I, I showed you guys, uh, you are welcome to have it. So we'll leave that, talk to Rita about getting that to you. I'm totally good with that. I think Rita's got some other written resources, uh, frequently asked questions about the program. There were kind of a summary of what was in the show. She could send those to you as well. Uh, and I do believe in those resources are my contact information, my email and, and cell number. You, you guys are welcome to call me anytime to talk if you wish to learn more. And by all means, if you want to talk to any of our students or graduates, I can put you in connection with them and get their view of things as well. 
I would suggest to all the attendees because I'm international student myself and I know uh, the difficulties into it. Really consider this program because it's a it's a very good in opportunity. It's very good in opportunity and you can go up really quickly in your career. So please consider it. It's 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 a great thing to look into it. Probably a lot of you viewing aren't really sure about what you want to do. And that's fine. Everybody goes through that. And some people change careers partway through after 10 or 20 years and realize it's not where they want to be. They're not happy. Find what you really have a passion for. If you enjoy being at your workplace and you enjoy being with the people and doing the things you're doing, that's where you should be. And if you have to force yourself to wake up in the morning and oh, I don't want to go there. You shouldn't be there. So by all means, you're smart to check other options out. Um, I, I think what does the work schedule look like? Is it morning shift? Okay. Well, it very, depends what you're in. If you're in sports field management or municipal parks, it's more of a, generally you start about eight in the morning, go to about four or five in the afternoon. With golf, it's a little bit different because golfers will tee off right at the crack of dawn. So mm -hmm. it's not unusual to start work as early as five in the morning in the middle of summer. And as the seasons get shorter in spring and fall, closer to winter, then you start later at six or seven. So it'll, it'll vary with sunlight. But the nice thing about starting at five in the morning, one nice thing is you're typically done about one or two in the afternoon. And in summer, that's pretty nice. To, then you've it's got lovely. to enjoy. Uh, and Ardit, I, I think you've taken up golf. Now you, you've never played golf before and now you're starting to enjoy the game. Um, yes. So that's the other thing. And, and whether you're in, in golf courses or in sports fields, I know a lot of my sports field manager buddies, they play soccer, they play baseball, they, they live. And, and not many people do that, that, can be at a workplace where they can go back in their own time and enjoy mm -hmm. the same site. That's pretty rare in today. Usually people want to get away from their workplace when they're done. So that's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Yes. And one more thing uh, that you, you can get from the turf management diploma, Stan can talk more about it, is that you can play golf in each, each of the courses in America and in Canada for, for free once you have the ticket the turf management diploma also for finish starting at five and finishing at 2 p.m in the summer it's really great because you have the rest of the day forward you exactly. don't like come up at 4 4 30 5 o'clock at the house and then get tired <laughs> and sleep so it, it's really great yeah you get you know you that's a lot of free time to enjoy summer yeah Go that ahead. picture I showed you at the end of this could be my office. I love that picture because it was taken early in the morning. And that was always my favorite time. And I just loved being out there at five or six in the morning when the mist is everywhere. Everything is dead quiet. That's when all the animals and birds come out and they're everywhere. It's just the most beautiful. And, and, and the sun is low. And that makes that means the shadows are visible from everything. It, it's just a magical time. And, and sometimes if I have to go back late at night to touch up irrigation, it's the same thing. It's gorgeous in the morning. And the, those are the things, little things like that. That they place spectacular. That they then you cannot find it anywhere. That morning air, it fills up your lungs. It is. Yeah. Artit mentioned something when he was talking that was interesting. He said when he first got there, it was such a busy place. And you know what? Anytime you go to a new workplace, it's going to be like that. You're going to be stuck in slow motion and everything else will be moving tremendously fast around you. You don't understand what this machine is. He said, what are they doing this for? Why are these people? And you know what? Just chill out. It doesn't matter whether it's this profession or any other you will get it. Just relax, pay attention, do your job, work hard, talk to people, ask for help. And slowly, everything slows down. Matt, right? Did that slow down for you guys? After yep. time, yes. you get comfortable with it. You understand you're in the flow of how everything works yep. 
in that environment. And then it starts to become, oh, I feel at home now. It becomes like a habit. Like. Yeah, on my first day, I was like, golfers are everywhere. How am I supposed to dodge the ball from this side, that side? But now I'm like, okay, I got it. It's going from here to there. But it's just, you get used to it. Yeah. I mean, for every job, when you are new, like you start like that, you, you just don't understand the terminologies. You don't know what people are doing. And, but uh, gradually you will get used to it. And more importantly, you just ask for help. If you don't know anything, just ask. And I think yep. people are very friendly and people are willing to help. Yep. Okay. Then um, last call for questions, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see if we have any new questions here. Okay, it seems uh, we are all good. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, once again, if you have any further questions, just uh, send an email to international at kpu.ca or send an email directly to me. And of course, I will share all the marketing materials or stands presentation slides to you. Uh, and um, all right, then uh, that's just, um, Wrap it up and say goodbye. Bye all. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye you everyone. Day. Hope to Have see you. Bye. Have a good, night. Night. Have yeah, a good, good night. day. If you are on the other side of the world. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Ardit. Thank you. Great Thank job, guys. You. Great presentation. And how was that good? You are dead. You aced it. Great job. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then have a good night. Gentlemen. Yeah. Okay, you too. Good Thank night. you. Bye. Bye bye. Great time. Bye, Lucia, too. Bye, Stan. Bye.